What's going on guys, Kyger here, and I recently got in touch with my friend Dylar that I played with a while ago who told me about this other game that he's playing and this is how that conversation went. What's going on guys, Kyger here, and today I'm checking out Eternal Evolution with a buddy of mine from another game, Dylar. What's going on, man? Hey man, it's good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, so we kind of, uh, after Marvel Future Revolution, we both kind of went different ways you went towards this game what brought you here uh the art style mainly i am the furthest thing from a fan of like the anime like uh that style of art uh, i tried street fighter couldn't handle that pixelated crappy art i've tried uh, heroes of middle earth middle earth the lord of the rings game don't like that art style it's the art style of this game that really drew me to it it's more like sci-fi and mature and that's what grabbed my attention um yeah like the honkai star rails genshin impact stuff like that i am not a fan of that art style and as such this was right on my alley so you're more fan of this like uh well i have a lightsaber guy right here i have a tron guy right here All right. Yeah, and all these all these cinematics are great. They did the developers have definitely done a good job on the the intros. That's for sure. That's pretty. Damn. It just the artwork appeals to a more I'd say an older audience, and uh, they just recently put a put their feelers out there. They were going to try to move to a more um, Asian influenced uh, art style and. He almost unanimously, everyone in the comment section of that post said, no, if you do that, I'm leaving. It's the art style that you have in this game that, that brought us and kept us in this game. Yeah, I can kind of see that. Also, as you said, uh, goes towards more uh, the mature audience. That's kind of what the whole game as a whole does, right? Because, uh, uh, spoiler alert for people uh, checking out the game, uh, part of it isn't idle game right here uh as i afk i could pick up some idle rewards so going towards the uh older people who have kids jobs things like that uh while they're working they can get some rewards but also when they're able to sit down and game they can push get further things like that right yeah exactly this like this game if you were just going to open it up and run through all of your daily tasks on a given week, given if it's full cycle week or half cycle week, um, I get it done in about a half an hour. So when I wake up in the morning, I'm on, on my phone for half an hour. I go through all my dailies. But then if something like Twilight Lands is open or this endless... I spent three hours doing the same fight in the one of the Katozian dungeons today. You can grind and you can tinker, manipulate your gear, theory craft if you want, or you can just play half an hour a day and be done with it. <laughs> Now, are there specific time requirements? So in uh, some of these other games I cover, uh, there's like 8 to 10 p.m. you can do PvP. Uh, at 11 p.m. you can do a war. Uh, is there like at 10 p.m. you can do X or Y kind of thing? No, it's all uh, like all of your resources refresh daily. It's a 24-hour cycle. And then there's events that will run from, uh, well, you got to do them every day, but your events are seven day events, 10 day events, or 14 day events. Um, guild hunts, um, which is like the, the guild raid uh, aspect of this game, you can launch two of them a week, and then you have 24 hours from launch to participate. And it's a, it's a, you go in uh, solo, but your total guild scores are what determine your progress over the course of the whole raid. So it's very, it's like, you remember Marvel Future Revolution, what killed it was their guild raid system where everyone, it was very, very time restricted. This is more how raid should be. It opens, you can go in whenever you want during the day and do your hits. You get two hits a day and then uh, and then it refreshes, you get another two within the second day. You get four hits over the course of the, or, uh, the whole raid. Each hit takes two and a half minutes, and you're done. Mm -hmm. uh, something I've noticed in some of the things like the daily challenge over here, and even some of the PvP, is you can just skip it 
Um, do you suggest that just for time restriction or uh, should you actually sit there and watch how it happens so you can optimize? Yeah. So like for me, that's a little bit more invested in the game. I'll, I'll watch uh, some of my PVP fights. I won't skip them just so I can get a sense of how certain gear sets are going to work on certain characters, how the battle's going to go. Uh, like, cause you can skip all, pretty much everything in this, in this entire game, which is nice. A lot of people love that function where you don't have to sit there for five minutes and watch a PVP fight. You can just go auto resolve and it's done. Um, and you, you're not gonna, you can't play arena manually anyway. Like you can other game modes, like guild hunt is a very manual process. If you want to that stuff, you can't skip. Uh, but say like Wasteland, they did an auto sweep feature, which was probably the unanimously the most um, celebrated uh, quality of life that they've ever given us. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Everything. Um, I guess the new dungeons you can't skip, um, and, and you can't skip like uh, the Lost Valley or the Katosian Triangle battles. Those ones you kind of have to watch. But uh, I think it's a cool little quality of life that heals to most people there you go so uh they do let's check out the the heroes themselves right so uh for the heroes uh how deep is the customization you feel for each hero like uh my emma how different can i make my emma from other emmas emma's a character that you can't really make her uh, that different uh, because she's kind of built just around uh, she's a, a launch character uh, simpler kit you kind of get pigeonholed into um, running just one set of gear in her now now Daniel on the other hand you can run him a completely different gear set for PvP um, there are a, a couple different options if you're a newer player and you can't farm the later dungeons you can run them in one gear set that works just fine but then you can switch it out for a completely different gear set as you progress. And then there's characters like uh, Luke, who you can gear four different ways. And Luke, you could actually manipulate his talents for different gear sets, because Luke is a true damage dealer. If you do not equip the, the, the top two purple talents on your top right, he becomes a crit Ba a crit rate and a crit damage based hero and you got to gear okay. him a completely different way that is typically how to gear him for pve like guild hunt stuff but for pvp you want to run him in a true damage build but for that you got to have a completely different gear set and how so there's a lot of characters that have many ways you can gear them how deep do you think is the uh the guild uh gear sets the, they are adding gear sets at a breakneck pace. They are getting, they are starting to get quite deep. So, and it's all RNG. It's the stats are all RNG. Uh, the smelting system is kind of nice that way. Um, you don't lose any resources. If you level up a piece of gear, uh, you can like use it as food on another piece of gear and you don't lose the resources. So they're really friendly that way as well. Uh, but once you get really into it, like I got a, a whole spreadsheet built for every single character in the game. Like I said, some characters have only one way to build them. Some have up to four or five. <laughs> well, as you said over here with Luke, uh, being able to change it depending on your talents or even not picking some talents to uh, build them a certain way is definitely eye-opening and uh, something to definitely think about. Uh, if we take a look, uh, primarily some of the main ways to change how your team works is your units, obviously, but also we have the commanders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So commanders, tell us a little bit about commanders. Uh, okay. So commanders, they started out with uh, just uh, random, just your standard commanders, which is like grace Gautier, uh Some of them um, that didn't, they give one specific bonus and uh, then they started releasing the SSS commanders. Now they have six SSS commanders for each class, other than support. Support isn't a team isn't a team unto itself, as it shouldn't be. And uh, really, this game over the course of the past four months, uh, it's clear it's clear now that they're pushing us towards set teams. But the good thing is, if maxed, if a person 
focuses on one team and maxes it, it is a viable PvP team. And as such, your commanders, it's, it, it is a nice way to customize your uh, your team. Like So right there, um, this one, Brunhild. It's a hunter commander. That would be optimal. Uh, plus two ultimate Emma. Uh, it, all, ideally, you would want a plus two ultimate uh, Rhaeserus as well. Uh, but you're never going to run Bru Brunhild anymore because the, the Triple S have more stats, and that's mm -hmm. also beneficial to you. And they also have the uh, secondary effects, right? The PvP stat. Yeah, so they got... Each SSS is also built for PvP as well. And now with the purification, yeah, that's a good way to waste all your diamonds, but you can select four out of the ten um, stats or the, the options under your commander. You can lock them and keep optimizing your other stats to get maybe another SSS of your class or more optimal stats. So, like, it's... It's everything's really really nuanced now. Like I was trying to help someone walk through how to get close to max score on one of the endless battle dungeons, and he had his characters were almost identical to mine, but my commanders had excellent substats which allowed me to get higher uh, mm -hmm. damage numbers. As an example, right here, uh, Karmada, right here in front of us. Uh, I've been using them a little bit because uh, I have two very, very strong hunters. But to get the most out of them, I really need a third. Uh, so, uh, as you said, they kind of want you to build around them. I've seen this guy quite a bit uh, in Leiden uh, doing several uh, summoners. I know summoner is a pretty good uh, team. So, being able to summon a bunch, uh, of course you're going to put him as your lead, right? Exactly. Yeah, summoners is kind of the starter <clears throat> team. They kind of they kind of push you towards summoners early now with giving Daniel in week two. It never used to be Daniel. Daniel was rare. Now they're just giving one of the best characters in the game to new players at launch because they have so much uh, guild content built around summoners that it's they're doing a really good way of pushing you towards that team first, which allows you to branch out. Yeah. But yeah, you would want that in Lightning <clears throat> Commander. And uh, even though commanders, just looking at them, give a pretty good depth in the game itself, uh, I think you can spend a long time here just diving into prototypes. Mm -hmm. Prototypes are... Uh, so all of the yellows and all the purples, you're going to get within the first... Okay, let me think. My my free to play account is 130 ish days old, and I now uh, just recently have all of the yellows maxed and all of the purples maxed free to play. You can get a lot of variability in there. They just recently, uh, so so the red prototypes, like you see one copy of Solar Flare above your head. The red ones are very rare. You're either going to spend a hundred dollars a pop to buy one, or you're going to have to rank high in Twilight Lands to get copies or you're going to have to rank in the top 16 of summon arena and that's like top 16 of a pool of thousands of people summon arena is whale wars that's where the krakens get their money's worth so the red prototypes are so rare but they have recently put out weaker yellow versions that are free to play farmable that do half of what a red equivalent prototype will do so that's really nice of the devs to do. They're not going to just make everyone fork out $600 to max a red prototype. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, there's a lot There's a lot of mixing and matching, but you kind of get into a groove with prototypes and you're going to just kind of come to use the same ones for the majority of your teams. And like there's, uh, a, there's a few garbage ones in there. Even, even though it's a lower tier, it could be a lot stronger, right? So like... Uh, right here is a yellow tier one company of heroes, but my purple that's, you know, pretty much maxed out is giving twice the stats and yeah. uh, has a, in my opinion, better effect uh, for at least uh, the team that I'm going to be using it in. One um, at the beginning, but uh, there was another one. If you go back on your screen, the purple one right beside it, the exact same one. Like that, that is a prototype you have to use in the hardest dungeon of the game, and it's a, it's a purple prototype. Uh, so this one, uh, you'll come to be. Uh, this will be your best friend later on for tanks. Yeah, I mean, uh, Boar is uh, the tank that I currently use, and he this would definitely help him. 
Mm -hmm. so uh, the prototypes are nice. They're 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 they cater to both free to play and Wales. And I've seen this mechanic in a bunch of games like this, but I think uh, this does a very good option of it because in uh, most games I see of this, they give you ten slots for free, and then you have to either raise your account level or uh, spend uh, gems and game currency to get more spots here. And then also, if you take someone off of your thing, there's like a cooldown to use that spot again. Here, it's just very, you know, click, drag, do whatever you want, right? Yeah, this is very nice of the developers to do, too. You just pick five heroes. Um, as you progress, like, you, as you get, like, say, your Oisa built up or a Leo, you'll, you can just, for free reset one of those heroes it'll take all of their resources off of them except for their evolution level and their uh exclusive weapon traits those are non-refundable and then you can put all those resources back into another character and make them your inherent character and uh for basically for free which that used to be worse right because uh, i was told you didn't even get uh uh these soul potions back originally no, that's incorrect. You've always gotten all of your soul, like 100% of your soul potions back uh, refunded to you. Oh, okay. Uh, just, uh... Well, I, sh I, sh I shouldn't say that. You can, you actually have to reset your soul potions separately. Mm. So when you take a character and reset them out of your inherit, they'll still have their soul potions built into their talent tree, but each talent tree has a reset button up top as well. Now, how often are there actual events going on? So if we take a look over here at the perimeter, uh, every two weeks it's either uh, one at the very, very top. Now it's a new name called Endless Battle. And in the bottom right, there's the Twilight Lands. As you see, it's the 12 days, 8 hours for Endless Battle. After that's done, Twilight Lands opens up, vice versa. Uh, are there? How often are there other events going on? Like right now we have... Uh, at least on a newer server, I have this elite chapter going on. So um, they always have something going as a as a weekly event. Uh, so there you got your major events, which is uh, Rise of Heroes, which looks like it's being replaced with Endless Battles. That's on a two-week uh, cycle with Twilight Lands. So two weeks Twilight Lands, two weeks Endless Battles, or Rise of Heroes if they bring Rise of Heroes back once a month. They have a one-week uh, PvP tournament called Summon Arena. And then weekly, they kind of have some standard ones that repeat every week. Uh, so there's uh, the Details Gathering event, which is followed up the following week by uh, the Quantum Mimic Machine. Both of those events the, are, are kind of pay-to-win. Um, if you want to get all of the prizes, it's RNG, or you pay $300 for all the spins and you can buy everything on the wheel or everything in the in the quantum mimic machine and then there's giant tower which comes around roughly every two weeks i've kind of, i've got it mapped out when it shows up we're likely due for another one next week um that's a good way if you if you bank your limited tickets you can get um a, basically a, a free copy of a triple s for 20 limited tickets but you have to have the caveat is you have to have 80 so you get your your pity one on the banner for 60 and then if you put another 20 in you can uh get another copy for that um for that 80 total chip tally so those are kind of all the events elite chapter i'd say is maybe once a month um if if that i could probably only i only can only think of four elite chapters they're that rare okay so, but it sounds like uh, as long as you're paying attention a little bit, you can kind of map up what's happening. Like, uh, I mean, we're going into June. You probably already have an idea of this is what the first week of June is going to look like, second week, third week, fourth week. Uh, maybe they throw in a curveball here or there, but you kind of already know what's going to happen, right? Yeah, you can map it out. This game follows cycles, and uh, I've put too many hours into going back into the update notes and mapping out everything like this new uh this new hero that came out this week i i knew unequivocally it was going to be a vanguard with a bleed function based on the easter eggs they led up to it and given the previous cycles of character releases um i think next the next after this two weeks 
I'm going to call it now. It's going to be an energy cycle. We're going to get a new energy hero, probably the return of Nord, because that's just where they are in their, their character release cycle. So if you are paying attention, yeah, you can kind of map out exactly what's going on. You can save limited tickets for giant towers, uh, whatnot, but um, I, don't, I don't think most people really pay that much attention. So two questions before we get out of here. Uh, one is, uh, in a lot of these games, so that is a, a big boon for this game. I know some people might get a little bored of uh, knowing, okay, first week is this event, second week's that event. But uh, as you said, this leans more towards the uh, older audience, and they kind of like that uh, familiarity of it's the third week, I get to do my favorite event. Uh, my question to you is, uh, how quick are these developers on bug fixing? Uh, so so I've had <clears throat> some direct contact with these, these devs, and... They get on things pretty quick. Um, they are China-based, so usually when I will say something in our Discord, I don't. I'll wake up and I'll I'll get the response. They're on a different cycle. But just say, for instance, on their Facebook page, they misspelled a word, so I instantly tag the devs. You guys got to change this now. It looks bad to spell join G I O N, and they had it fixed within a day. So and they're they're very very open to um, changes that uh, that we can kind of suggest for in game. They are putting out polls and uh, questionnaires nonstop, and a lot of the stuff that they've asked us to um, kind of vote on has been implemented right away. Like right now, the home page. If you go back to the very very opening screen, there was a questionnaire. Uh, not this one. Hit story instance challenge. Not that one, the very, very first one. So, I'm not going to lie, when I first downloaded this game and I saw this interface, um, I almost didn't play it because this looks pretty old. Mm -hmm. So, they are revamping this entire interface. So, they put out a questionnaire. They gave us a whole bunch of options to pick from. What do you think is the coolest one? And they they will pick what the, the community votes on to be their new uh, homepage UI. Okay. Uh, what I was kind of trying to get at with the uh, the bug thing was, uh, so literally yesterday we have this new unit coming out that came out, Barog. So mm -hmm. my question is, uh, if there was a PvP game-breaking bug where him and like Rez or him and some other unit uh, caused an issue that just made you win or uh, gave him far greater stats than he's supposed to have, uh so that would have came out on Thursday. Bug, we figure it out on Friday. How quickly would you suspect that it would be handled? Well, quite honestly, there hasn't really been many game-breaking bugs. Um, uh, and you see it in the patch notes. They do do bug fixes all the time. But uh, their ability to balance characters other than Nord, <laughs> uh, when he came out, he kind of broke the game. He was OP. But they've done a, they do a really really good job with the the hero kit development. Um, normally, like we got early access to Nord, we knew he was going to be broken when he came in, and he is broken. He is the king. But they haven't really uh, launched a hero with many like PvP game breaking bugs um, for us to even fix yet. Okay, uh, off that same vein, uh, how often do we get? Uh, balance patches for units and is it generally buffs or nerfs they haven't had to buff or nerf anything yet they're still rounding out the teams so um yeah i see right here yeah well no i'm talking like so your pvp teams or your, your oh you have your, your summoner team your tank teams. team things like that yeah summoner team tank team like they're just now finally getting close to having each team be viable. And um, each team, if you, like I said, if you max it out, it can be very PvP viable. Some teams will hard stop other teams, but it's very, it's very balanced right now. Like a summoner team, um, when it was first introduced into the game, it was OP. If you didn't have the summoner team, you weren't, you weren't beating anything. Um, uh, Vanguard team was the original team. Summoners killed it. So the Vanguard team was now dead. And then everything that people tried, hunters, um, tanks, everything, couldn't touch it. Only now are they finally having it, so it's very, very rock, paper, scissors. 
So they're, I think they've done a really good job on character development and team development. It's just it's taken them a long time um, to actually ha even out the entire playing field. But the two max a character, like one character, and by max I don't mean um, immortal, five, um, hyper evolved one twenty. Their talents, their this... exclusives. Yeah, max in this game generally means immortal zero and x30 x30 is the benchmark of what makes a character actually go and each team uh, generally has three triple s of their class and each team generally needs two of them to be x30 to be viable in pvp and then you also need the associated prototypes to go with that and that takes time as well to build mm -hmm. so uh a lot of people uh just across most gaming uh, there, there's obviously going to be people that really, really enjoy the optimizing for PVE, things like that. But I see gaming as a genre leaning more towards PVP. How's the PVP in this game? Okay, well, so right now I'd say this game is is absolutely a, a PVE game. There is PVP, but you, if you've looked at the the arenas, you don't really get a lot of rewards like galactic arena you just got to get top 50 and you're getting the exact same rewards as the top 50. um you get a little bit more coins per day but even if you're getting if you're out of the top 50 you're going to get enough coins to get your res copy every two weeks okay. which is the main prize so uh that's galactic arena pvp uh one-on-one -on -one pvp is also the rewards are minuscule like if you go into the regular arena and then go to rewards or ranking like not that one that one right there so you get your daily rewards and then you get your payout rewards really in the long term no one cares about nothing. these purples right no one cares about the purples diamonds are plentiful in this game if you don't spend all of them which you don't have to do you the, there's so many events where you can get diamonds that uh, diamonds are basically meaningless in this game they're not totally meaningless like of course they'd like to throw an event out here and there where you need a huge stockpile of diamonds if you want to get everything free to play but that's rare uh so the right now these two arenas which is the primary pvp it's 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 negligible it's it's a tiny little part of the game now they did do a beta of the guild versus guild pvp about i think it was two months ago and it was horrible absolutely horrible they actually did an apology post with, admitting to how horrible and lazy it was. <laughs> so they have announced that they are going back to the drawing board and the new Guild vs. Guild should be out around July. Okay. Now that, if they do it right, and we've made a lot of suggestions on how they should do it, um, I think that this is going to be more of like uh, uh, Marvel Strike Force or Star Wars Galaxy Heroes type Guild v. Guild. So that will be a huge focus if the rewards are appropriate or like large as well the rewards might be might be poop because the last guild v guild the rewards did not matter they, okay. they really did not matter at all so just to give you an idea of what uh the game i'm coming from or and still doing uh summoners where chronicles is doing they're also releasing their guild versus guild this month in june and how that looks is uh it's one on one on one it's three different guilds at the same time uh we have 10 bases here you have 10 bases here third team has 10 bases here we can uh attack those bases capture those bases and kind of like uh, if you play clash royale things like that where you kind of have to encroach on your enemy's area uh and then you get um points uh over time as you have more stuff and then you get uh, things like that. And even though in that game, it is real time where you can, you know, click your buttons, move things around, uh, the battle in that is more like this, uh, style of game where, uh, auto battle, you can use your ults when they're up. Uh, so that might be an interesting way of doing it. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I just hope it's better than what they gave us before, because what they gave us before was uh, dog crap. Now, la very last question before we get out of here is the uh, the gotcha system. Mm -hmm. So, how much of these tickets are we getting? So, I 
uh, let's just say on my on my free to play account, I get enough limited tickets to pretty much get the pity copy of every banner. Like there is enough limited tickets given to you as soon as you're out of the first four week rotation and you're into the every, every all the events that the global events or that everybody globally can partake in, you will get enough. Uh, limited tickets if you're completing the content like if you skip your ancient altar every week then that's on you you just threw away 40 limited tickets <laughs> so between ancient altar and all of the events um and all of the arena payouts and stuff that's coming on you should get enough limited tickets to get uh, at least the pity copy on every banner uh sometimes uh, my free to play account will accrue surplus limited tickets and i'll try to save those for a giant tower so i can get that extra copy for that 20 extra tickets um it's slow if you're free to play but like this this game gives you so many events where you get free copies like right now you can't see it but we have an event called galactic treasure which is as long as you play galactic arena every day five battles every day you're going to be able to get all of the rewards on the board and the main prize on the board is a gene hybrid which is basically a gene hybrid in this game is a free copy of any triple s hero so this game now that the teams are all developed the free to play they will give you enough resources where you can kind of choose which direction you want to go in and as long as you stay focused and you don't scatter your resources in eight different directions, you'll be just fine. This game is very free to play friendly. Even as a uh, low spinner or whatnot, uh, not scattering your resources is a, is a really important thing. But uh, the pity in this game is uh, 60. It doesn't say it here because it already went past the pity. Uh, but that's actually kind of low for games like this. Uh, the game I'm playing right now, uh, it's 200. Uh, but you get a, probably a bit more scroll uh, tickets in that game uh, to make up for that. But even converting it like that, 60 is pretty good. And even when you go past uh, the cap, you're still getting stuff. Uh, probably not the best idea unless you are a big spender or whatnot. But just getting like, uh, you know, this Daniel which as you said is very important i mean look at his description uh summon buff mecha lord yeah he is the linchpin of the summoner team him and ampu are the one and two combo mm -hmm. uh yeah. but i mean just right here in the daily farm this is your daily farm grind right here right these three things but if we take a look at right here you know uh this isn't the uh the ticket to get the uh, specific ones, but uh, very powerful purple units uh, for these cards right here, which you get from there, uh, only uh, for your clear rewards here, and over here, you're getting them. So just on your daily grind, you're getting some dopamine. Well, and you can, so what you're supposed to do, the strategy is you have to bank all of those yellow tickets, the, the advanced tickets. Um, a free to play, should bank 500 and then pull a f so every two when you get out of the first rotation you're going to have a, a heroes rally which is a pull event and then a military expansion i think they call it premium development now which is uh it's uh a pay to win no one does that one but the heroes rally if you as a free to play if you save 500 uh advanced tickets you can get a triple s selector for a triple s hero uh, if you save uh, 700, I think you get a Bailey copy. If you save 900, you get a you get all of that. You get a Triple S selector card. You get a, a Bailey, and you get a Gene Hybrid. If you save 1200, then I think you get a Nord copy. So uh, that daily grind, those tickets you get from your daily grind, if you're patient and you save your resources, you can get even more uh, elite materials or elite heroes in this game. All right, Dollar. Well, uh, tell the people where they can find you so we can get out of here. All right. Well, my uh, I'm not on Twitch anymore. I don't really do a whole lot of Twitch. I just lark around on Twitch. Uh, but uh, YouTube, it's Dialar's Twilic Tactics. Um, if you search up any Eternal Evolution content, you're you're sure to to find one of my videos. Are you just doing this game, or are you branching out at all? Just this game. I I only really uh, my life's so hectic. I only have time for this game. I tried 
Call of Dragons lasted two weeks, dropped its pride. Lord of the Rings made it, what, a week? And then dropped it. Uh, tried Street Fighter, made it two weeks, dropped it. This is, it's, I only really have time to focus on one game. Um, and this game uh, takes up m the majority of my free time. So this is it. All me. right. All right, guys. Well, if you want to check out Dylar, I'll have his link down below. And if you want to check out this game, I highly suggest it. I've been playing. I know it's only been a little over a week, but I've been enjoying it. Uh, as Dylar said, uh, you don't have to be on at exactly 8 p.m. to do your guild raids. You don't have to uh, be on at a, you know 10 to midnight to do your PvP. You can... As long as you have time throughout the day, you can get what you need to get done during the day. Till next time, guys.